Hey everybody, Sarah here. So today I'm not feeling super well, but I do want to get a video out for you guys. And so today I'm going to be doing the morph intro series and we're going to go over the morphs that are M through P. And again, I know that sounds like a big jump, similar to the last one that was like K through L, but there's really not that many morphs in there. Before we jump in though, I do want to thank all the members on this channel for supporting us so much. Thank you guys for everything. If anybody else would like to become a member, we have two tiers. We have one that's for $2 a month and one's for $5 a month. You get different perks based on the tier that you join. So if you'd like to check those out, you can check the join button down below to see what all those perks are. Also, a quick thank you to Reptilinks for helping to support this channel. If you want to use my code SarahSnake27 at checkout at Reptilinks.com, it gets you a discount and I also get a percentage off of your purchase. Also, please remember I have a website called sarahsnakeshop.com where I sell corn snakes and corn snake accessories, including corn snake morph books that are written with the beginner in mind. So if you are struggling with learning these morphs and maybe you don't have time to sit and watch a whole video, uh, you can maybe go get those books and they will help you at least kind of learn the basics and the history of where all these morphs came from. So we're going to start today with the morph called Micro Scale. It was originally called Micro Pave, but they decided to go with Micro Scale because obviously the scales are small and this is the first sort of second scale mutation that we've talked about. Uh, there is a scale list mutation that we will talk about in the future, but we're going to stick with micro scale right now. Micro scale basically just makes the scales smaller. Uh, and so there's sometimes you'll see a little bit of the skin, the kind of in between the scales more than you would normally see. It doesn't harm the snake, doesn't really seem to bother them, doesn't really change how they need to be handled or anything like that. I just honestly think it's super, super cool. And it is uh, the only scale changing mutation that is not a hybrid mutation. And I say that we've talked about lavender. So lavender technically is a scale mutation. And so lavender is not included uh, in, in that, but um, between like scaleless and micro scale, scaleless is a hybrid mutation. Micro scale is not. However, they are related in the same way that some other genes are. We talked about hypo, all of the hypos like hypo, strawberry, and Christmas, how those three are related to each other. The micro scale and scaleless mutations are related to each other in the same way. So uh, with most uh, gene mutations in corn snakes, let's say Amel and Anery. If you breed Amel and Anery together, you will just get all normal babies because both of those gene mutations are recessive to the normal type. The normal type is dominant over those mutations. Uh, however, even though the normal type is dominant over both micro scale and scaleless, because they are related, it's called allelic, they fall in the same place on the DNA, for lack of a better word. I, I want, I'm trying to use the more layman's terms for these things so that you guys can understand it a little bit better, especially since this is for beginners. Uh, since those two gene mutations affect the same sort of spot on the DNA, if you breed a microscale to a scaleless, you get a mix of the two, which we are calling microscaleless. They look like scaleless that have a few more scales or microscales that have a little less like fewer scales than usual. But we're gonna stick with micro scale for right now. So micro scale is one of the few mutations that came out of Miami lines and they were actually produced originally in Europe. Did a whole video on all the details on micro scale. I will link it up in the upper right corner for you guys if you'd like to go check that out. I have a deep dive on each of these morphs uh, and I'll, I will link all of those up above. The second morph that I wanna talk about today is Motley which is one of the more common morphs. It is also a recessive mutation and it has a very similar relationship with Stripe as micro scale and scale is due to each other. Uh, I'm not going to go into the Motley and Stripe craziness because there's a lot of craziness. I've also done videos on that as well. So that's gonna be another one that's linked up above or I might link it in the description because I can only link five things up above and uh, I want to link certain videos up above, but other ones will be in the description. So if you don't see what you're looking for uh, in the upper right hand corner, check the description to see if I put anything else down there. Anyway, so what Motley does is it removes all of the belly checkers. Motley's have no belly checkers, except occasionally they might have like a couple little tiny paradox ones here and there. 
what it really does is it pulls the sort of saddle pattern together along the back and it makes it look like there's sort of these spots of background color. So when we talk about ground color or like background color versus saddle color, the background color is usually going to be the lighter of the two colors and then the saddle color is going to be the darker of the two colors. So if we're looking at a normal corn snake, the saddle color is usually going to be that sort of tan on the background and then it's usually a tan orange and then the saddle colors are usually going to be either red or a darker orange depending. So if you are looking at a motley corn snake and you see the little spots that go down the back, those spots are actually the spots of the ground color, uh, which is what motley does. It pulls those saddles together on the edges and makes that the dominant color on the snake. Mask is the next one on this list. Mask is one that originated in Diffused and a lot of people still confuse some masks for Diffused to this day. In fact, sometimes I'll get on Morph Market and be looking for Diffused or Blood Reds and I'll see some very obvious masks on there that are not Diffused and Blood Reds. So uh, just be aware of that. If they have any belly checkers, they are not diffused. So just keeping that in mind, we did talk about diffused, I believe, in a previous one of these videos. So that's probably one I will link in the description if you guys want to go see the sort of overview of diffused. We also talked about a diffused, a deep dive of diffused in a different video. So if you want that deep dive, I'll also try to put that in the description for you. But mask uh, does something similar to diffused, but not exactly the same. It makes it so the saddle color, the darker color on the snake, doesn't take up as much space as it normally would. Uh, this is how I used to describe the look. This is not how it happens in the egg, but this is how I describe the look. The ground color, which like I said, is the lighter color on the snake. Imagine that that is a lake. And then the saddle colors are the islands on the lake. So if you imagine the background color, which is the lake in this scenario, rising, it makes the islands smaller. It makes them look like they have shrunk. So if you imagine this on a corn snake, the saddles will sometimes not line up the same way as they normally would in this scenario. So sometimes you might see what we call a teardrop pattern. And what this also does is it kind of separates the head pattern from the body pattern as well because that ground color kind of comes up in between the head and the body pattern. This is also pretty commonly seen on stripes and some motleys, so don't confuse stripe and motley head patterns for being masks because they are not always going to be masks. If you do see a motley or stripe mask, usually the head pattern is even smaller. Another thing and the most common thing that the mask mutation does is it does not allow the belly checkers to go all the way to the center of the belly. So masks will have a line down the center that appears white and then those checkers will sort of line up on the edges of the belly. Sometimes the checkers are so small they look like they are not even there. You may only see them up at the neck on the edges or maybe only down on the tail. This is often what we call a super mask. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the genetics, but since mask is incomplete dominant, not dominant, if there's one copy of mask on the DNA, it will have a sort of a lower expression of the mutation, whereas if there's two, which means it comes from both parents, there's going to be a higher expression of the mutation. The higher expression of the mutation will have an even more hypo look, uh, which uh, also comes from this like flooding, this rising of the lake, if you want to call it, uh, where the saddle borders often just like are non-existent, are very, very thin and small, making the snake appear to be hypomelanistic, even if it isn't. It's actually more of a pattern mutation than a pigment mutation. So the four main signs of mask, I'm just going to mention them right here, is the belly checkers lining up along the edges, the head pattern being separated from the body pattern or almost separated from the body pattern, an overall sort of hypomelanistic look to them. And occasionally we also see these like oddly shaped uh, saddles as well. Some of them sort of being stuck together. We call it a teardrop pattern, um, but that is not always necessarily going to happen. It's just like more common in them. The last mutation I want to talk about today is another incomplete dominant mutation, and that is palmetto. Now, palmetto is probably one of the most popular morphs out there, even though it's still relatively uncommon. Palmettos are completely white with little speckles of color all over their bodies. 
and this is what we call a leucistic mutation. Leucism is uh, essentially what happens when all of the pigment like doesn't even really show up or doesn't show up where it should. I did a whole deep dive on on the on palmetto a little while ago that goes over the genetics and why this happens and why palmettos so many of them have these large eyes it is very common for palm palmettos to have large eyes and this is very common among any leucistic uh, snakes this is because what causes the leucistic mutation also controls like where different cells go in the body if you mutate the gene that tells the cells where to go well maybe too many cells will go to certain places and too few to other places. So in Palmetto's case, uh, very few cells go into the pigments, but in some cases, many, many more cells will go into the eyes. We talked about incomplete dominance. I'm not gonna go into the details, but again, if there's one copy of the mutation, which just comes from one parent, then the snake is gonna look a certain way. And if there's two copies, which means it came from both parents, then it's gonna look differently. The palmetto that is white with all the speckles, that comes from two parents. You have to get that from both parents in order for that to show. Uh, however, if you only get it from one parent, the snake just sort of looks like a hypomelanistic mutation. And sometimes this hypomelanism is so subtle, you can barely tell it's even there. I hope that this brief video explaining these uh, helped you understand them a little bit better. If there are any questions that you have, please let me know. I do a Q&A on this channel once a month. Did not do one last month uh, just because there were so many other things going on. However, I do plan to do one this month. So if you do have questions, please let me know and we will do that next week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in a new video soon.